suck at aiming in Counter-Strike. Well, you're probably here because you do, and don't want to spend hours growing aimbots, and let's be honest, cheating's more fun anyway. In this video, you're going to learn how to write your very own aimbot, start destroying your enemies, and climb up those ranks with ease. But first, we need to have a solid understanding of how the aimbot works. If all you are here to do is paste, feel free to skip this part. First, we find the enemy player which is closest to us in memory using the entity list. Then, we use the enemy's player position and our player position to work out a relative vector between the two objects. Finally, we use trigonometry to find the angles of the vector relative to the x and y axis and we set our player's view angles in memory to be equal to the angles which point to the enemy's head. Warning, this tutorial is not for beginners. If you are struggling to debug, then that is not my problem. Figure it out on your own. Once your Visual Studio is open, navigate to the top right corner, hit clone repository, copy and paste the link in the description to my repository and hit clone. Now that the project is open, hit the show all files tab in the top right corner and then open the drop down menu to open the solution. Next, create two new folders, one called SDK and one called Cheats. Now you're going to want to create some new files. Inside of your SDK folder, create two header files, one called Client and one called Offset. Next, inside your Cheats folder, create one file called aimbot.h and another file called aimbot.cpp. Next, navigate to the other link in the description to the A2X dumper, navigate to the generated folder and copy and paste the contents of client.dl.hpp into your own solution as well as the offsets.hpp into your offsets.h file. Now we can begin coding. First, use the pragma once header guard. Then you're going to want to include your client.h file and your offsets.h file both from the SDK folder. Next, you're going to want to include the vector.h file which is in the math folder. And finally, you're going to want to include the memory.h file in the memory folder. Next, create a namespace called aimbot, create two variables both inline, module base and proc id. These will store the module base and process id of our game. Next, create another function called distance which is going to take a two vector threes and return a float. And finally, we're going to create a final function called frame which is of a return type void. Next, open up your aimbot.cpp file. First, you're going to want to include your aimbot.h header file. Next, you're going to want to create your functions for your distance, taking in two vector threes, returning a float, and making sure to be inside the aimbot namespace. And finally, still inside the aimbot namespace, you're going to want to create your frame function. Next, we're going to want to write the code for our distance file. All this does is uses the Pythagorean theorem to find the distance between two points in any 3D space. This is done by finding the relative position of each x, y, and z coordinate from both points, squaring them, adding them together, and taking the square root. Now, we can begin coding our frame function. First, we're going to want to create an entity list variable, and inside that, we're going to want to read the memory at the module place plus the entity list offset. We will use this layer to read all the entities and find the distances of them from the player. Next, create a variable which is going to store the address of the local player pawn and we can get this by reading the module base plus the dw local player pawn offset. Finally, we're going to create a variable called team and inside this we're going to store which team the local player is on so that we can do team checking to make sure we're only aiming against enemies which are not on our team and we're going to do this by reading the local player pawn address and adding the iteam num offset to it. Now we're going to create a vector3 variable called local ipos. This is going to store the local i position of the local player. And we will do this by finding the foot position known as the vector origin of the player using the offset and adding on the view offset. The view offset stores the, different, the distance between the local player old origin and the i position. And when we add this to the old origin position, we get the i position, which we're going to use for our trigonometry later. Next, we are going to create two variables one storing the distance between the local player and the closest found enemy and the other storing the position that the closest enemy is at. Now create a for loop iterating between 0 and 32. This will be the index of our entity in the entity list. Next create a variable called list entry 
which will store the handle to the current entity controller, which will be modified using some bit manipulation. We must also error check to break out of that iteration of the loop in case the list entry isn't valid. Next, we need to create a variable called entity controller. This will store the entity controller's address. We will find this by reading the list entry plus 120 times the index. This will return us the entity controller. And furthermore, we do need to do some error checking to make sure that the entity controller is a valid address. Next, we need to find the index of the entity controller port. We will do this by taking our entity controller and adding the m underscore h player pawn offset to it. Furthermore, we do need to do some error checking so that we don't end up with a invalid entity controller pawn later. Next, create a variable called entity pawn, and inside that, we're going to read the memory of the list entry, adding 120 and timesing by the uh, index of the entity controller pawn, and doing some bit manip manipulation to it. Finally, we're going to want to do some final error checking on the entity pawn. Now, we're going to check if the entity's team is different to the local player's team. We will do this by comparing the entity pawn plus the i team num offset to the team that we found earlier, which is the team of the local player. Next, we're going to want to check that the entity is alive, and we will do this by reading the entity pawn plus mi health offset to find the entity's health and making sure that that is bigger than zero, and if not, we will end out the loop. At this point, we can be sure that we have a valid entity which is alive and on the enemy team. So now we're going to want to find the entity IPOS. We'll do this by reading the entity pawn and adding the old origin offset to it to find the vector origin of that entity. And then we're going to want to add the vec view offset to the entity pawn and read that vector 3, just like we did before. And what this will do is find the entity I position relative to the world. Next, we are going to want to use our distance formula to find the difference distance between our local I position and the entity I position. If this current distance is less than the closest distance, that means that this is the closer entity to any previously entity found. This means that we're going to want to set the closest distance to be equal to the current distance, and we're going to want to set the enemy position of the closest entity to be equal to that entity I position of the entity that we have just found. What this will do is as it iterates over the loop, it will give us the entity position of the closest entity to us, which is the one that we are going to want to aim towards. Now, we're going to want to find the relative angles to the x and y axis. And we're going to do this by taking away the local eye position from the enemy position and using trigonometry to find the angles relative to the x and y axis. Finally, we're going to write this to our view angles inside our module base plus the DW view angles offset. Now, open up your main.cpp file. First off, you're going to want to delete any code which is already inside of the main function. And then also, you're going to want to change from including your renderer to including your aimbot.h file from the cheats folder. Now, from inside the aimbot namespace, you're going to want to set the process ID to be the memory get process ID function of your CS2 game. And then you're going to want to use that process ID to find the module base address of your client.dll DLL file, which will be inside of your CS2 executable and storing that in the module base of your aimbot namespace. Next, create a while true loop. And inside that, you're going to want to use get async key state to check that your aimbot is activated. And we're going to use the left shift button for that toggle. Then inside that, we're going to want to call our aimbot frame function and finally return zero inside your main function. Now our aimbot has been finished. Feel free to run it as long as your Counter-Strike 2 is using the dash insecure flag in the Steam configuration settings. Now, if we go into our game and use our left shift toggle, we can see that it locks onto the nearest enemy's head. And we can do this for multiple enemies. If we hold our keybind down and start shooting, it will just uh, kill all the enemies pretty quickly. And now I believe it's time for a showcase.